wool. It's not just for socks or for your granny to make you horrible jumpers with. Wool in Minecraft is a really important resource. You make carpets with it and you can keep your redstone circuits all making sense with all the different colors. I'm gonna show you how to make a wool farm for all of the colors in Minecraft. Don't you go anywhere. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, depending on what time you're watching this next episode from me, Amamans, in my farm tutorial series. And today, I'm going to follow through with something I've been threatening for a little while. I am in a flat, nondescript world, simply so as there's no hills in my way and stuff like that, because I'm going to be starting 113.1 wool farm. We're going to make a farm that does 16 different colours of wool, collects it all up, sorts it out so as each one's got its own individual stack of chests. Yes, indeed, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be pretty simple, I think, as well. So let's crack on with it. I've split what you need to make this farm into two sections. For the building section, you're gonna need approximately 264 oak blocks, 198 oak wood planks, 32 gates, 10 chests, two doors, 180 spruce steps, 124 spruce slabs, 64 oak steps, 48 stone brick steps, two mine carts with hopper, about 16 redstone blocks, about 170 um, rails, about 30 power rails, and about 64 torches. And you'll also need 32 sheep and two of each die color. And if you decide to do the sorting system, you're gonna need 82 oak blocks, 64 oak wood planks, about 85 hoppers, it is quite iron hungry this one, 64 chests, 16 comparators, 16 repeaters, 48 redstone dust, 16 item frames, not 64 that I've written there, 704 cobblestone blocks which will become blocker blocks, one anvil to turn them into blocker blocks, three trapdoors, 16 torches and two of each wall block color. So this is a relatively big build in terms of its footprint. You have got 30 by 21 rectangles. 30 across the long side, 21 down the other sides. Now let's get on with the actual building. What I need you to do first is to dig out a channel that is too wide and too deep all the way around the edge of this square. So literally the entire length 21 this way and 30 the other way and then 21 back until you have a completed arc. So I'm just going to do that quickly and there you have it. So you've got an arc there and then along this other back edge I want you to cut out six, three, four, five, six and the same on this side another six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So that should leave you with something that looks a little bit like this. And if you count up, you should have, and I think I might have miscounted it, one, two, three, four, five, six on that side, and one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, do you know I did get it right? Happy days. And you should have here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12 bits all ready and waiting for you to work with. So then on this side in here, we're gonna start building up the rail system. It's the rail system that is gonna give you the collection of this particular farm. And what you're gonna do is you want to build a rail system that curves around the corner that way, and then you wanna come up this way, and you want it to curve around the corner that way, and then come up this way, curve around the corner that way, and then finally curve around the corner that way. Then take out that block, take out that block on this one, take out that block, take out that block on this one, take that one out, take that one out, and you can guess, take that one out and take that one out. And put a block of redstone in those holes, exactly like this. And what this is gonna do, this is gonna power the powered rails. Now, of course, you don't have to use a redstone block. You could use um, a lever underneath or a redstone torch underneath or something like that. But I prefer to use a redstone block. It just gives you that extra oomph. Stick three powered rails on the end of each.
exactly like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to join these up. We're going to count one, two, three, four, five, six. Should be seven on that one. On this one, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And on this end, we're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that one has to come out and replace it with a powered rail. You could, if you want, put a powered rail on either side. You totally don't need to, but you absolutely could. And then here, we're going to go, where's the standard rail? Whoop, we're not doing that. We're just putting that there. And we're going one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. That is perfect. Then what we're going to do is we've got to put a rail on the inside of this as well. But we have to be really careful, otherwise we're going to start joining these rails up in ways we don't want to. And that's not something that we want to happen. So what we're going to do is we get a normal rail, shove a rail there, 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 and there, there, and there. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Take out that block and shove in a block of redstone. One, two, three powered rails. And then again on this side, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then take out that block, shove in a block of redstone, one, two, three powered rails, and connect the dots up with rails there. And then here, we're gonna take out that redstone there. We're gonna go one, two, and three, and then one, two, and three, like that. And at this end, one, two, three, and four, one, two, and three. And then here, block of redstone, one, two, and three, and then one, two, and three. And that should leave you with a gap that is one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, which is a 13 long run and is actually theoretically enough. But what I like to do is just make sure it's got a little bit of a boost and shove in a little bit of a powered rail there. It just makes the minecart slightly slower and nobody needs that. So that's coming around like that. And then here, we're going block one, two, and three. And then we go one, two, and three. And then here, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Take that out, block a redstone, one, two, three. And that should give you a rail system that looks exactly like that. And that's perfect. Now what we've got to do is we've got to um, put on the grass top. Now it has to be grass and the reason it has to be grass is because we want the sheep to regenerate their wool and to regenerate their wool they need to have grass. Now you can do this in a number of ways. You can do it the um, dead easy way by building this where perhaps that block is a grass block and then all you do is you fill out this with dirt and once you fill it with dirt the grass block will grow onto the rest of the dirt. That's definitely a very good way of doing it. But if you want, you can use your silk touch pickaxe and you can fill up your hopper or your, your chests with actual grass blocks by digging up grass blocks with a silk touch pickaxe and that works beautifully too. So I'm just going to fill these all the way in. And fill that in with glass as well. There we go, all the way around. Obviously, if this is already grass, you don't have to do this. That is perfect. So you should end up with a system that looks exactly like that. Okay, now it's time to build up the separate sections that these sheep are going to be living in. And for that, you need your wooden blocks and your wooden planks. And each section is basically going to have three, um, uh, th a three long wall with a two by two square in the middle. So the first thing you want to do is you want to come to this end wall here and we're going to be creating a three by three square here so we're going to go one two three and here one two three now what you want to do here if you wish is you could do these in standard wood or you can do them in wood blocks it's entirely up to you i'm going to do these uh, bottom ones in actual wood blocks but fresh cut wood blocks then leave a gap of two and go two three all the way to the end leave a gap of two two three four and leave a gap of two one two three and four then leave a gap of two one two three four and you're repeating that process all the way along until you get to the end here and then do exactly the same in these corners 
until you've got um, rows of, I guess, separated sections all the way around. And when you have, shove her back into. I'll be back when I finish that. And this is what you will end up with. You'll have a row of five compartments on that side, a row of five compartments on that side, and then two separate rows of three compartments on that side with a two wide gap in the middle. Now, I did make a very slight geometrical error here. And what you need to see is the side of these compartments should run in line with the edge of the box that we made earlier. And I was one off. So just bring this down one. I had previously had my row there. I actually meant to put it there. So apologies for that small error. Dead, dead simple to fix though. So thank goodness for that. Right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get ourselves some oak fences. And I'm gonna put the oak fences, two oak fences next to each other in each of these compartments. Now the reason we've got grass under these oak fences is when we have sheep in these compartments, there is a small chance that they will eat all four of these grassy areas. So if you do not have a grassy area in front of your compartment, you need these bits to be grass so the grass will grow back into the compartment because the sheep won't be able to eat anything that's underneath those fence gates. So just get fence gates in, a row, miss the middle one, and another three, and another three, like that. And then get yourself your oak planks and go one, two, three, along each of the fingers of the compartments to make just a slightly taller wall. Now the reason we've got a slightly taller wall is because those sheep will absolutely and definitely climb over a one eye space, without a doubt. You could put a half slab on there if you wanted, that is definitely an option. I personally like to separate them out completely so they can't talk to each other because they'll start to discuss escape plans and we don't want these fellas escaping in their woolly tunnels. That would be bad. So let's get these are like whoop, these all along here and then on the back shove two more oak blocks this is purely aesthetic you don't have to do oak blocks in fact you don't even have to use wood at all you can use whatever block you want but I'm just going to use wood and I'll be back when I finish that off so the next bit is the fun bit. This is the bit where we are going to be bringing our sheep into our farms. Now, the first thing you've got to do is get yourself some wheat. That is one of the best ways and just tempt the sheep in by holding the wheat and say, come little sheepy, come into my farm. Now at this point, it doesn't really matter what color they are. Get yourself a sheep in here, at least one, maybe two sheep would be good and then lock the door. Then the same for the next one and lock the door. Same with the next one, and lock the door. I'll just sort of kind of give you a, a wee demonstration of that. There's a sheep. Look, sheepy, I've got some food. Let's come this way. You know you want to. Let's open up these fence gates. Don't worry about them. Come into my parlour, and then get yourself a little bit of a push. There you go. Close the fence gates behind them, and it's as simple as that. And then basically, do that with all of the compartments. So get yourself one ideally two sheep in every compartment. And that's the point at which you wanna get them all colored. Now, for example, if you wanna um, color your sheep red, you hit them with a bit of rose red. If you want them brown, in with some cocoa beans. If you want them green, cactus green. If you want them purple, some purple dye, cyan dye. You get the impression and get each pod as having one color, the same color all the way around. So I'll be back when that's done. We've got a massive array of 16 different coloured sheep, two in each, dead simple. Got the sheep in there exactly the same way as I showed you and then dyed them up with the various dyes that are relatively easy to get by. Also, we can also have a choice. We can choose to have a simple collection system or not. If we want a simple collection system, very, very simple indeed. Take out two there, add two there, add two like that. And here, stick a chest. Stick a chest next to it. Don't press shift, otherwise you'll get two individual chests because this is now, remember, 1.13.1. On the top of these, check this chest here, put a hopper and a hopper. And then on the other side of the hopper, shove two more blocks, two more blocks down like that. And then just run your rail up and over. Remember to shift click as you go over the hopper. Get rid of that. And then exactly the same way. Obviously, you would use powered rails in the right position to be able to 
power the minecarts as they go over. Shift click, down, 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 and down. So that is a really simple collection system. You can open up that chest and you'll be able to get all of the wall very, very easily. But if you are blessed with an iron farm and you've got plenty of iron, you have a choice here. You could go for a slightly more complex system. And if you're going to do that, this is what you're going to need to do. I want you to come to level with this wall here. So not the first one, this one. And you want to come in so as you're level with not this edge, but this edge. And bring yourself there. Oh, no, not there. There. Like that. And get yourself a row all the way across until you're in the same corresponding place at the other end. It's 16. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. And you'll find you're in a corresponding place there. And then bring yourself all the way along to one short of here. Just one there. And then take out the whole of that level. That's great. Okay, and then here, I want you to take out 2D all the way down. And everything here needs to come out 2D all the way to this edge. So I'll be back when I've done that. So you've got a nice big hole that looks exactly like that. Come along to the side that's got the ledge, the one high block at it, and looking sideways, really important that you look sideways, stick yourself a chest. Do it again, that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16, counting with Avo strikes again. We have got 16 double chests, and then you're gonna enter into those 16 chests, 16 hoppers all the way wrong remember to shift click or crouch click otherwise you'll just open those chests and it gets very very annoying i'm telling you that now then come along put a space and then a block and you're going to do 16 blocks that's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and sixteen on the inside of this block you're going to shove a torch on each and every one. I'll come and get the ones that I've missed in a second, which is that one. And then on these hoppers, again, facing um, in one direction, shift click. So that you get doubles all the way along until you've got it completely full. Let's get this done. So once you've got all of those chests in, I want you to come one and then two blocks away, so a two block gap, and run a row of blocks all the way along. Again, 16 blocks, and then get a redstone torch, and shove a redstone torch on each and every one of the insides of those. Like that, brilliant. Then we're gonna get a row of blocks on top of those torches, and then we're gonna get a hopper running effectively from the block into the chest. So shift click and go all the way along. 15 and 16, there we go, that's perfect. Then we're gonna get ourselves a comparator. In fact, we're gonna get ourselves 16 comparators and we're gonna shove a comparator on each of these blocks just past the hoppers like this. Should be 16 going into there. And then, bit more redstone to come yet we're going to put a repeater going into each of these blocks all the way along then get yourself stop throwing the stuff away over that's for goodness sake then get yourself a row of blocks all the way along there a row of blocks on top of the repeaters along there and then a row of blocks behind the repeaters like that and then you just need a bit of redstone dust so get redstone dust, and you're going to fill this entire section up with redstone dust. Now, those of you that see my item sorter that I did, what was it, a couple of months ago now, you'll notice that this is ever so slightly different, and there is a reason for that. The old item sorter, and especially in 113, does have a propensity to get a little bit gammed up if you overload it. If you try and put too much into it, 
too quickly, you find that it doesn't quite work and you end up passing items through that you shouldn't be. This new system, which is very, very similar, but slightly different, will give you an absolutely flawless system. You cannot gam it up. It is much, much cleaner in that regard. Okay, so that is that section done. The next bit's very, very familiar, I suspect. You want to come along and shift click a hopper into the comparator, not on top of the comparator, into the comparator. You could also, if you wish, put a block on top of the um, chest here and run the um, hopper into that, but it's just as easy to shove it into the comparator like that. Okay, it's really important that it goes either into the comparator or into a block on the chest like that. If you don't, the whole system will stop working and no one wants that in their life do they no you want this system to work beautifully and then get yourself on top of here we're going to decide which end is the front end i've already decided because it's here and we're going to get a block at the back end that is level with one above those hoppers there and we're going to run hoppers all the way to the end going in this direction running into each other can you see they're running into each other again dead important otherwise the system will not work so get that running all the way along we need 16 hoppers here i did tell you you needed an iron farm it wasn't like you entered into this with your eyes closed oh no it was very very definitely made clear for you that this is what you require and then we're going to bring a hopper there and a hopper there and a hopper there and then what we can do is rather than having this chest here and these hoppers running like that what we can do is we can get, just collect those up, get these out of the way, like that. We can create a system where we elevate our track dead, dead simply, like that, but we run hoppers into it. So this is, again, very expensive. Eyes open, people. You knew it was going to be. I did tell you. There we go. So that hopper runs in there. Get a hopper into that, hopper into that. And here you can go maybe four, you could go six, you could even go eight. But I think that that is enough. And there. Okay, so then get yourself your rails, run your rails over here in exactly the same way as you did before. And obviously you need to make sure that they are redstone worthy. So what I would recommend you do, you shove yourself a bit of redstone in there. You get rid of that. You make that redstone and that redstone. Make that redstone. Make that redstone. Make all of these redstone. Don't make those redstone just in case it gives off any signal to those hoppers. It's not worth it. Then get rid of those. Make those redstone again you don't have to do it with a redstone block absolutely not you could do it with anything you wanted really and uh, a lever is good especially on an elevated system like that just shove a lever underneath and you'll be away and then i'm just going to redstone these ones make that one a redstone block two there we go so then we've got a system that will work and will be powered and that will be beautiful. So then what we need to do is we need to get our um, stopper blocks in. And the way we do a stopper block is quite simple. You can choose a block that you're not going to throw in accidentally. So I do like basically anything but wall. But what if you accidentally drop something? What if you hit your Q button and you lob some cobblestone into the thing and it gets picked up and you're using cobblestone as your blocker well dear viewer all you need is an anvil and a few experience points and you are away open up that anvil shove the block that you're going to be putting in and just change the name and you can do whatever you like literally you can do cobblestones and that would work and you can click that up that is then labeled cobblestones you will never be putting cobblestones into any of these things so let's get this make these cobblestones there you go you could call it blocker you could call it george you could call it anything you wanted literally as long as it's not something that has a fighting chance of finding its way into the system now you are going to need a fair number of 
Georges or cobblestones, you are going to need 44 for each of these hoppers. Yep, you heard it right. 44 for each of these hoppers. And what you're going to do is you're going to get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. You're going to put 11 of these cobblestones or cobble whatever George's into here. You'll notice you're getting a signal here. The signal goes one, it goes two. It does not go three. That's a good thing. We don't want it to go three. We only want it to go that many. And then it works beautifully. Right, so we're going to do that on all of these and I'll be back when I'm done. Once that's done, you want to get yourself one of every colour of the wall, just the one unit of that. So all of these in, hopefully they'll fit, probably not. No, I'm going to be one slot short, which is absolutely typical. Let's just shove that in there to get out of the way. There we go. And then, starting from your first one, it doesn't matter what order you do it in, obviously, it's entirely up to you. Just click one unit in there, and then the next colour, one unit in there, and the next colour, one unit in there, and then carry on all the way along until you've put a single unit of each colour into each progressive one. So you should have 16 different colours, meaning you've got 16 different hoppers within which to put your individual colours. So come along with the next one. It seems like quite a, a long task and it's not too bad. We're only talking about 16 different sorting sections here. It's not like it's a big 64 block uh, massive system. It is just 16 systems. There you go. And then what I want you to do is this is just for safety. If you were to lob, I don't know, your your pickaxe or something into the system on this top one here, just shove the chest. And if anything that doesn't get sorted will end up in that chest, and you could then easily pick it up without breaking anything, because the last thing you want to do is break it. And then come along here, get all of this stuff back in, in the order that you put them into the chests, I highly recommend. Then we've actually got a functional system, and if we had uh, the sheep being sheared, this would pick it up. But obviously, it doesn't look very pretty at the moment. We're not worried about pretty quite yet. We need two minecart with hoppers. We want to get one minecart with hopper on there, one minecart with hopper on there. Give them a little push. And that will set them around that system and they'll race around it and in a second you'll see them come out the other side popping out over the bridge again there we go and they'll carry on doing that forever and ever which is awesome and then what we're going to do is we need to fill up some of these holes so we want to do it in a way that's not going to block it off so you only want to put two at each end like this and again to there so that's all you need and that will work beautifully and then you see they come out there still that's very nice that one's going to slowly fall behind because it's got slightly longer to go in case you're wondering Avo why is that one so much further behind it's because it's got a longer lap it's a wider lap and then we've got oak logs that we literally just bring oak logs all the way around here and then oak planks And I recommend getting yourself an item frame with one piece of wall all the way along on each of these individual chests. And then it's down to you to build it out the way you want it. And this is one completed wall farm. We've not done too much on the outside. We've given it some legs just to make it look a little bit more grand from the height. It looks really quite nice. No need to put a roof on it, really. You're not going to be worried about phantoms because we've got a bed in here. So you can AFK and overnight and whatnot as much as you like with the bed and the phantoms won't bother you because phantoms only come for you when you've not been sleeping. And if we come through the door, 
get ourselves out of the door. You can see here we've got plenty of light. There aren't any spawning areas whatsoever here for a nasty. We've got sheep all the way around. We can come in here, we can grab our shears, and we can come and shear our sheep. That wall sometimes will be caught by us in our hands, but more often than not, especially when we're standing on these steps here, they will go into the system and be collected up by those mine carts. And that, as you can see, all the wool is disappearing as the mine carts go past it. We can shove our shears back. Like that, we've caught a little bit of wool. But that is not a problem because you want this wall to go into the system too. That's no worries. You come around the side here, you go up your little ladder, you throw open that trap door, and you throw these bits of wall into the system like that and close up the trap door. And if you ever want to get inside, just come down. Little maintenance hatch there, you can do whatever, make sure everything's still working properly. And when you're ready, up you go. Shut that bottom one shut the top one and you are ready to roll once again you've got storage for food to be able to feed to the sheep should you want to make them make little babies and that is one farm that can produce you plenty of wool whenever you need it and that is a working system Okay, I admit there is a lot of iron goes into this system, but it is really fancy pants once you get it going. And you don't have to have the iron system. You could just have a couple of hoppers shooting into a few chests. That would be enough. It would still do the job. But look how fancy pants this is. You've got all that colour, all those sheep, and all of that wool that you're going to get out of it. If you have enjoyed this video, please do remember to slap that like button. It would be great to know you're enjoying them, and I will keep making the farm tutorials. Also, if you've not done it already, please do hit that subscribe button. It would be great to see you in my sub club and the notification squad. And I look forward to seeing you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye.